top of the time, tea time, yeah, this is tea time, yeah, make a difference, one cup at a time, tea time, so be sure to grab your tea, grab a seat, and tune in to Miss Liz, tea time, tea time, Making a difference, one cup at a time. Well, welcome to Tea Time. Miss Liz is here, and I have an incredible guest sitting in the back. I have Kim Van De Vandesen, and she's coming in from the Neverlands. That's right. We're traveling today. So we have some incredible stuff going on. We're going to be talking about her book, Flower of Love, her platform, and cards, all that good stuff. We're going to get you over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel first before we get into all of that good stuff. And then we have an incredible tea that is going to be being served today. And the tea today is teaching embodiment and ascension, ascensions. I hope I'm saying it right. If not, she's going to put it out there. You know how Miss Liz works. If she can't pronounce something, I get my guests to say it. So I want to get everybody over to Miss Liz's YouTube channel. Give that little doorbell a ring and be notified when all these incredible tea times go live. You can watch them at any time when you're ready to watch them. If you're at a ball game, if you're you're at a family gathering and you're a little bored, you can always turn on tea time and listen to Miss Liz. But shh, don't tell the family that I've told you that, um, you know, and if you're in your car driving on a long trip, you can listen to these tea times and there's there's tea times for everyone so if one tea time doesn't resonate with you the next one will i guarantee i have a bunch for everyone so let me get the disclaimer in there let me get kim's bio out there and let me get kim in here so we can spill some good strong tea with you today so the disclaimer is this tea time live show miss liz myself is going live using Streamyard. before leaving a comment please grant your permission to see my name at streamyard.com please be advised that the content brought forward for any tea time show hosted by myself miss liz is always brought forward in good faith however may bring forward dialogues and opinions that are not representative of my platform the facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing all tea time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that this show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Ms. Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that the show is not made for you at this time, I respect those wishes and we'll see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, the press release for July's guest is a little late this this year, uh, this this month. It is coming. It is working on getting processed. So stay tuned for that, Miss Liz. We'll share that after on Miss Liz's Facebook page and all her platforms. So be sure to check that out and get a lineup for July. Now a little bit on my guests. Well, I got to meet Kim through another Tea Time guest. So from Paul Marwood, who was uh, Marwood, who was on Tea Time a couple months ago. You can also check his Tea Time out on the YouTube channel. Uh, but he's like, Liz, I have this incredible guest for you. And I swear you will enjoy having tight in tea time with her. So Paul sent me Kim and that's how I got to meet Kim. And you see, that's how we work. We all work together. So now a little bit on Kim. Kim is a visionary, a visionary on a mission to guide millions in reconnecting with love to awaken their inner wisdom and divine spark. As a sacred art, art architect, cosmetic channel and sacred, te sacred teacher, she empowers others to navigate rapidly changing times, manifest their deepest desires and fulfill true purpose fueled by love. She's a two-time international best-selling author and founder of Flower of Love Mystery School Lineage. Kim channels divine love, teaching from Earth's evolution. Her embodied wisdom fuels her compassionate mentorship, recognizing the transforma transformational power within. Kim finds inspiration in nature and family moments, inspiring others to embrace their limitless potentials through love. And you can check out her book and all that good stuff. We're going to talk about that. And we're going to get Kim in here and we're going to spill some tea with you. Welcome, Kim. 
thank you. It's really an honor to he be here and I'm excited to share the sacred space with all of you. So thank you. Well, it, it's an honor. And I was like, absolutely. And I love when my guests say, hey, you know what? I got a guest for you, Miss Liz, that you're going to enjoy. So again, thank you, Paul, for that. Thank He's Paul such said. a beautiful soul and dear friend. So uh, yes, really beautiful. Well, I if I believe right, you and Paul worked together on a book yes. or something, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. like the inspiration came uh, so love. It's about like it started as my podcast. So and through that the book came out. So yeah, there oh there it's on this side. Yes, so love. So both wrote a chapter in that beautiful book, and it's really empowering to see how all these stories come together. And yeah, I always love when people collaborate together after working on a project together, right? Or yes. they still promote that person and say, hey, check this person out, yeah. check that person out. Yes. So Kim, I'm going to take you back a little. So who was Kim as a little girl and who is Kim now? Kim as a little girl, very curious about life and always feeling like there was something more than I could see or something more than I saw the grown-ups around me doing. And so I always have had this greater question. And yeah, throughout my life, there have been many pivotal moments where like, uh, yeah, my father died when I was very young and that awakened this deep grief within me, but also this deep like, okay, what is more in life than it opens you up when someone things like that, challenging things like that happens, it opens you also up to a greater questioning and, and a greater awakening to the truth that is within ourselves. So for me now, it's like, um, I noticed like in my in my journey, and I think a lot of people tuning in can relate to that. I, I, in a way, started to copy the world around me, the people around me, and in that I neglected my needs and I neglected who I was and I like my voice, my and, and in that you slowly start to dim your light and you slowly start to be more as everyone else than yourself. So there have been many pivotal moments throughout my my life where my soul was calling me to awaken and most some of them were very challenging, but those were in the end, when I now look back, my most powerful moments because it was my soul knocking on my door and saying hello <laughs> you need to remember a part or stop dimming your light now it's time and and i i, I needed a couple of those <laughs> to be where i am today but it's really like embracing every part of who we are and and i see like how i neglected so many parts or how i judged so many parts because i was not as everyone else i was different i felt different things i i noticed different things and most of the things that i noticed were not per se things you could see or, or like with the tangible on the standing so it was really me coming back to this deeper trust in myself and to this deeper voice and to this deeper knowing and yeah that sometimes goes beyond time and space so it's really um me claiming my uniqueness and that's why what i now guide others in because it's not per se that my truth is the truth but i'm sharing what i've learned in my own journey so others can awaken their light and can awaken their wisdom and their and like the world needs who we are in our essence, not all the layers that we have learned uh, as conditioning or like you need to be like everyone else or that society wants you to be. I'm a young mom and, and married and all of that, but there are also a lot of labels in that as well. And it's really inviting us to come back like, okay, who am I in, in everything? And, and if I don't want to want to be part of these labels, how can we be in this new earth way of truly being uh, truthful to ourselves and our light and what we feel in ourselves and also to the different roles that we have and the different so i think i've become in, in a way like when i came to this earth i was pure whole and i remembered everything and then slowly i forgot and now i'm back on this journey of remembering and that is um, yeah really beautiful so kim do you think you're an old soul i think so yes many 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 lifetimes and my soul really likes trial and error so and I think that's the powerful thing. Like we learn through our experiences. And in my whole life, I've always, I, well, one of my mottos was, I rather regret what I did do than I didn't do. And it's not per se for everyone to say do everything, but it was really like we learn through our experiences. Just like in the last couple of years, me stepping more fully into my mission. It's not per se day one, it's perfect, or we are yeah. where we are. But by us saying yes to our inspiration, just like you, or many more than 300 episodes but you in first time saying yes to this tea time and to these beautiful conversations and following that initial spark and we grow through that so it's really embracing i think the growth journey and everything that happens in between and yeah there are so many things to share about that but uh yeah we come closer to who we are and in that it also becomes more easy because then we don't have to be uh with our mind it's really going back into the space of our heart and what we feel true to share with the world yeah 
Well, and that's what I got when I when I did my homework on you, Kim. I was like, I think she's an old soul. Like yes. I felt connection right away because uh, yeah. my grandma said it all the time. She's like, you're an old soul, like. You. And yeah. I was like, I just don't belong here. Like I belong somewhere else. Like you always yeah. feel like you're out of your own body. Yes. Like you're not you're not in the right place sometimes. Yeah. You know. Uh, um, and channeling it it is something, especially if it brings confusion, right? Because then the fear comes in, and then the yeah. self doubt comes in and then you're like okay well maybe i'm a little crazy here maybe what the yes, heck is yeah. going on right and yes. i love the word i love that you use the word different because i love different it's like yeah. an onion right everyone has a different layer there's not one onion you're saying no. cut an onion I, I i i suggest that to all the listeners out there go and grab an onion and cut it yes but grab two onions and cut them and see if they're the same yeah. they're not going to be the same I love that. Uh, you know, um, yes. and, and that's what I got when I went and I said, Oh my goodness. It's like, we talked in the back and I said, Oh, she has cards. I, you know, like yes. I like to support the guests and I like to buy their books and their products. And, and I'm like, Oh, she has cards. Let's talk about the cards. So let's talk about these cards. How did you create the cards? Kim? It was really like me following my sacred. Yes. So it like a couple of years back, I channeled my book and that was really at first I thought, okay, this is it. I, I, I felt this inspiration to follow this guidance and my book came out, but it's really what I love when we say yes to these sacred initiations, when we say yes to the inspiration, new things unfold. So the next revolutionary step was that the book also wants the car tech. And um, it's really beautiful that when we follow this inspiration, it happens with the speed of light. So in a whole weekend, the card that came out and it's really beautiful because they're all sacred geometry code. So they interact with your subconscious and your soul and your higher self know what to do with them. So they each have a unique code and you can just look at the image, but they also have different messages. And, and it's really a deepening spiral of the book. Because that, that is what I like in this time, I'm all about embodiment, but embodiment is not per se knowing with the mind. Embodiment is feeling, experiencing, knowing with every cell of your body. And that's what we're being invited into. And that's not in like also for me, it's like before I was constantly searching for the answers outside of myself. And, and searching for new teachings and new, and yes, we get beautiful codes out of them and we get inspiration, but it's not per se that one teaching is the truth. No, we are being invited in this time and space to find our own truth and to find our own wisdom that is stored within ourselves. And yes, these books can spark something, but then there is like the onion, there is, we are being invited to go into this deepening layer. And that's what I loved. Like I, I'm reading my book every month yeah, new and, and really deepening these codes. And that was the invitation of the card deck because they help you spiral in different topics of like maybe this time my inner child needs more healing or my divine feminine is ready to rise into new heights or there are sacred codes that want to be shared and, and in oh, that, that we deepen our understanding. Oh, now I've lost the, let's see. Yeah, this one. Okay. <laughs> It's the gratitude card. So to embrace more gratitude in our lives and to see what happens there. And, and it's really beautiful because then we are going into this embodied experience where we understand with every cell of our body, with every part of our being. And that's also what I, I've learned throughout my different challenges in my life. When a couple of years back, I had a burnout. I changed some things in my life. But the moment I was healthy again, I all my old programming came back because I didn't change it at the root of the cause. And now a couple of years later, when I got a chronic illness, it was really my soul asking me like, okay, now it's time for a halt. But the interesting thing in that was that I wasn't being asked to go deeper within myself. And when we do that, beautiful things start to awaken and then we truly get the shift. But then it's also by really like, if you see your cells, your body, like this whole field that, that is part of you, you really take it out at the root and then it doesn't influence your future anymore and it's really understanding that is in the deeper understanding or in the deeper spiral or like if you see the onion sometimes we take like if we see a trauma sometimes we take out the outer circle and we think now it's done yes i'm ready finished <laughs> i've healed it but then we notice that as we move forward there is a deepening spiral that wants to be seen and this time and space and sometimes it's very challenging but we are being invited to see the root or the center of this onion because that is what the true elevation is asking for us and that's where the whole flower of love lineage is stepping forward because we need love. We need yeah. to feel safe. We need to feel like nourished in every cell of our body to fully let these walls go down and to go into the center of the onion. So I really love the onion to come forward in this space because there is power. 
there's power in no longer denying our shadows. There's power in no longer denying our inner child that wants love and it wants to be seen and it wants to be like everything it didn't receive when we were growing up. Because yeah. that we truly elevate every part of us instead of with the old paradigm, like, okay, I'm, I'm moving forward, but I'm still holding this bag of weight and I need to move it with me. And somehow I keep stuck and moving in the same spirals. No, this time is really about facing and knowing that it's okay. Like these layers, they just want to be acknowledged and by that things open up. So it's really what I love about these codes, they help in multiple ways because a lot of these things, like they're hard to express. And that's what I love about light language and these sacred codes, they really help you in different levels of your being. So in different levels of your onion to take the root out because some things we can't even understand with our minds. Like as a child, we experience certain things or sometimes even have past lifetimes. And then we can try to, okay, I need to fix this, but we don't even know where the root of that energy was created or it was in such a subconscious layer that we don't understand. And, and it's really co-creating with all these different parts. So that's what I, yeah, I'm excited about these codes and they really help you to really deepen in yourself. And yeah, so. Well, and the onion keeps spo uh, kept speaking to me b before yes. we even went live. Uh, you know, I was just like, it's the different layers, but yeah. Your platform and your book is called Flower of Love. It's the different layers, right? Because you got to put the seed in, you got to plant the seed, yes. then the bud yes. grows, and then the flower grows, and the yeah. petals grow. So it's different layers again, right? It's the different layers of life. Yeah. Uh, and that. And for the onion, it, it, the different layers, when you get right to the center and the root cause, like you said, you had to go to the root cause to heal yourself, right? Well, yes. the flower had to go to the root cause of the seed to grow itself. So, yeah. you know, sometimes, you know how they make those videos where they show how everything grows and then they reverse okay. it and they shrink it all and do, 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 do. Yes. that's almost like the layers of onions, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's in the middle. That root cause is right in the middle. That little, little slice of onion that's in the middle. And, you know, when you cut an onion, you cry and you don't know why you're crying because yeah. it's the different layers, right? You're cutting through those layers, yeah. uh, you know. Um, we got to look at uh, life and food and flowers and nature at the different layers, right? And it's like the yeah. or the butterfly. That's why I love that card with the butterfly on it. I was just, and I got butterflies on. I got butterfly earrings. I just, I, love like, I, just, yes. I just felt right away connected to that card. And, and it. it's the gratitude, right? The gratitude of meeting each other and, and yeah. connecting with one another. Uh, so, Kim, I want to get into the flower of love. How did you yes. get that title? How did you create that book? How did that book come about? How long did it take? All that yes. good stuff. Yes. Well, it was just a divine download. So I I never really thought I'm going to write a book, but somehow I got the inspiration and I, I committed to myself. So I, like it was in 2021, I took a time, like I, I was my, my guidance, my inner inspiration was guiding me for two weeks to sit two hours with myself and to just let every energy that wanted to flow, flow through. And in that beautiful channelings came. So I recorded the channelings and, and after a couple of channelings, I understood it was a book, but it didn't came in as chapter one or two. It was like a whole, like first maybe chapter 16 and then eight. So, but in the, in the end, in 24 hours, the whole book came through. And then of course the whole editing comes and it needs to come in the right order and all of that. So within a year, my, my book was out and sharing with the world, but it's really beautiful. Like at first I thought, okay, I, I, I download these codes and bring them into the world and, and that is it. But since I brought them onto paper, then the real growth starts because then we suddenly need to go over these layers. Like who am I to share these codes? And what, yeah, so you need to go through also the lifetimes maybe where we were killed for sharing our wisdom and for sharing our voice and our truth. And there's something to bring it onto paper, but there's another thing in publishing it and bringing it into the world because now it's suddenly tangible for the rest. <laughs> like it's a legacy you leave. So for me, the real growth started after I channeled these codes and after the book came out because then I was really being invited to embody everything that was being shared. And it's really about really about facing your inner garden. So if you would see your subconscious layers as your inner garden, and there are so many weeds growing there that we don't even understand where they are coming from, but they are a vibration in our field. That is, if you see the law of manifestation, it is sending out a vibration and it's attracting certain experiences into our life that we sometimes even don't know. 
but the world around us mirrors our beautifully what is happening within us. But it's really starting with the awareness, like, okay, if I get challenged, if I get triggered, it's not to hold me back, but there's a part of me that is asking attention with love to bring that back into harmony. And when we do that, it can open up and suddenly we create space. And that's what I love about the, the, the garden analogy as well. When we take out weeds, we suddenly allow the, the flowers we want to grow. We allow our dreams to blossom because we stop. We allow the hindering energies to, to, to be taken out. But it's not with hard force because that's the old paradigm way where maybe you have a weed and you try to pull it out with hard force. And then, but then a lot of the, like the little roots, they stay there because we do it with so much hard force that, that like it breaks and it cracks. And, and that's the same with us. This time is really inviting us to, to see these weeds with compassion and with love and to invite them to come out. And then suddenly you see that it opens up and it expands. And most of the time, the traumatic elements in our, in our field, they hold wisdom. They hold power. They hold a voice that is ready to be expressed. But it's only through the softness. It's almost if you see like a wall. If you try to, to make a wall go down from the outside, it doesn't work. It needs to go from the light within. And when the light within is ready, it just opens its doors and it shares its wisdom because it feels safe enough. And, and that's really the flower of love. I, when I download these codes, it was really in, also in, in my deepest despair, in my, in my time of chronic illness, where I reconnected with these codes and, and they really supported me to, to believe in love again and to believe in possibilities and, and love, not, not per se in love from another soul, but really the love within ourselves, with the love of the universe, the guidance that is within us, the field of infinite possibilities. So it's, it's really inviting us to expand. And the book guides you through beautiful transmission. So there are light codes with, intertwined between the, the, the pages. And so as you read through it, it's not only your mind that understands, but it's also your soul and your, your field that expands and it is being invited to step into their next level. So there are beautiful activations and yeah, but it's uh, for me as well, embodiment, it's an ongoing journey. And, and it's really beautiful because what I notice is like before, if maybe a challenging moment would happen. Let's say it cost me a week to come back to harmony, but now I can shift the energy in, in just seconds. And in that, we don't take it into our future. It's understanding that our thoughts and our words and our actions, they hold power. Yeah. But also yeah. where we choose to focus our... So if I'm constantly in fear, I will also plant seeds or in the end, I plant um, like um, uh, weeds into my future. And it's not to hold you back and it's not to create even more fear, but it's to empower you. Because when I have beautiful thoughts in this moment, when I have loving, compassionate thoughts, that's what I'm planting for the future. And those will become beautiful flowers. Those will be flourishing energies. So it's really, I think it's really coming back to the space of inner empowerment and knowing what, what we can do. And yeah, but it's really by me following this initial inspiration, the whole lineage came through, but it was not like, okay, I'm going to create this. And this is also the name. It just like, yeah, it just came through in a, in a beautiful way. Yeah. So in, in flowers, uh, flowers of love, it's an anthology, correct? Is the book an anthology or is it you you with all of your stories, Kim? No, it's like, no, it, it really takes you on, on a journey on its own. So it starts with uh, you you could reconnect with the field of love consciousness. So um, it's like, yeah, I, I don't know even like it's a transmission on its own. So it guides you through beautiful activations and beautiful awarenesses. And so it's not my story is not in it because it's a channeled message. So it's really the Flower of Love Council that shares the codes and the chairs, uh, their wisdom. And yeah, it's really beautiful. So at the beginning, I share a little short story of mine, and then it's the whole channeling that came through in 24 hours. So uh, you get beautiful activations that all like, again, coming back to the onion, because it's also remembering that our, we are divine wholeness. We are oneness. It's always there. But a lot of the layers we have placed on top of it are of our parents, of society, of the trauma. So it's coming back like it's peeling away these layers to come back to our pure essence. But it's really understanding that sometimes we, we start to doubt ourselves or why am I here? Or I'm not good enough or I don't belong here. But it's understanding when we came here to the earth with our seed of light, yep. that was pure and that's still intact. Whatever has happened in your life, however traumatic your life has been, that light within you is still there. But sometimes we need to peel away a couple of layers and, and that's what the book helps you with with the conscious awareness, but also the deepening layer. So I get sometimes beautiful stories that people read a certain chapter or an activation and they start to cry and they feel like this 
immense expansion that is happening, but it's not always in the understanding like of a conscious situation or it's really this deepening coming home within yourself. And yeah. Well, it kind of comes back to that onion, right? I, I know yeah. we're talking a lot about onions. <laughs> I think you're part of the people thing. <laughs> yes. But you, you talk about society and parents and siblings yeah. and all of that. And you know, as the onion builds, it, the layers get thicker and thicker. Thicker, yes. right yeah uh, and that's how life is it gets heavy sometimes so yes. you got to slice away and sometimes you have to remove that layer you have to remove it and shrink it and start again and there, it's okay to start over again it's okay to begin and plant an, a seed again but that inner child is always within yourself and yeah. and that's what i really love about the tea is because the tea is the inner self and that's mm -hmm. why I ask for words. Yeah. I, and, I, and I don't serve the beverage. I serve a different type of tea because yeah. we all have an inner child within us. It doesn't matter what race you are or what country you're from. We mm -hmm. all have inner children in us because we were all born with that seed within us, right? Yes. And unless we understand that seed and we give that power to the seed, the inner child, and heal that inner child, go right down to the root cause again, yeah. we're, we're stuck, right? And yep. the layers get thicker and thicker and then the onion grows and it gets bigger. And then we have gigantic onions, you know, we have yep. these different types of onions and, and, yep. uh, I, but it goes back to the flowers as well, because there's so many different flowers out there mm -hmm. and they each have their own layers as well. Yep. And, and trees, they grow different branches. You know, it all goes back to the circle of life. It is, yep. it, it, you know, and, yeah. and and that's what I really liked about the flower of love is that it, it goes back to the circle of life. It brings you right back down to the seed. Yes. Uh, you know, um, I, there was yeah, one but word it, that it I, is what love does because love brings you back to truth, not right? the truth, but your truth. So sometimes love will be right in your face because it will mirror you like, OK, this inner child part of you or this traumatic challenge part wants to be seen, wants to be acknowledged. And it keeps asking attention until you are ready to see it. But it will also show you your possibilities, your purpose, your mission, your wisdom, your guidance. Because what we're all here, like there's something unique. Each and every one of us is here to embody. There's something unique you took with you when you came yep. here to the earth in your seed of creation. There are codes ready to awaken. And it doesn't matter in what, which way, because some are being guided to write a book, others to create a beautiful podcast, but some are are like sharing their codes when they're helping people as a cashier or there are so many ways, but there's something unique that only you can share. And, and that is truly unpeeling the layers of how society wants you to be and how your parents and how the school system has brought you to, okay, you need to be like everyone else. You need to be to, like, no, go within and discover how you were as an inner child. What excites you? What, what makes you happy? What makes you spark? What makes you, there's wisdom there and it's allowing ourselves to follow that. Because that's also a thing most of us have learned, like, okay, we need to be serious and we need to have a goal and we need to work and all of that, our education. But somehow the element of joy has, has been taken out of it. But joy is a guiding force on our journey. Follow your joy sparks because they are part of your mission, of your purpose, of what you're here to bring. They bring expansion to your soul. And that is, that is a message. When we feel excited, that is a message. Follow that. So, yeah, I think that's really... Uh... Well, it's following that intuition, right? Following that gut. And, you know, and when somebody tries to talk into something and your gut is saying, nee, yeah. don't do it, yeah. listen to your gut because... Well, yeah. then you, you suffer the consequences if you don't listen to yourself, right? Uh, and then we learn something new. Yes. <laughs> yep. Lesson learned, right? <laughs> yes, that. <laughs> so, Kim, I want to go into your tea. Because yeah. you brought in the word embodiment, and that is one of your words that you gave me. So you gave yeah. me teaching embodiment and ascen ascension. Ascension, yes. Ascension. Yeah. So let's get into those words. Why did you give me those three words? Because for me, like, I I am guided from my, like, it, it has multiple dimensions. So teaching embodiment ascension. First, it was about me embodying more of my codes. So unpeeling the layers that were not me and coming back to my true self. And now that I've reconnected to these codes, I am here to hold space for others to do the same. And that's really embodiment is about almost like practice what you preach. So in that, I, because I've reconnected to that part i get to guide others and ascension for me because it's really it's this journey again this cycle like we in meditation before like for example in meditation we rise to new heights and we awaken more of our wisdom but in the end we don't live in meditation 
we live here on earth and I, as a mom, need to do the dishes and the household and I'm standing at the schoolyard and everywhere. But this time and space is inviting us to embody our wisdom in every space I am in. And that is about ascension for me because it's like a spiral, like I'm going into meditation, collecting new codes, but then I'm being invited. So that's ascension for me. And then I'm being invited to embody that wisdom everywhere I go. So not per se in my speaking, but just in my energy, just in my presence, just in the actions that I do in the words. And I think that's how the new earth is being created and is being is inviting us to do. Like, again, not the knowledge with our mind, but to know with every cell of our body and to be the example. So not only like, because it's very easy. And that's where a couple of years back, where the shift is now from, from then, like a couple of years back, yes, I had this magical experience in meditation and I could feel so free and just like, okay, like myself. But then I came back to my to, to the earth and then I was again in my body and doing groceries and all of that. And suddenly I felt like disconnected again or I felt alone or I felt, and now we're being invited to really take all of that energy, all of that wisdom into every cell of our body, every part of our being so that we feel that connection wherever we are because we are always connected with ourselves, with mother earth, with the universe. But it's time to remember that again and to really share that in every space we're in. So now when I'm at the schoolyard, I'm, I'm just vibrating this energy and some people resonate with it and it's not the same words and some feel challenged because that's also the power of love. When I embody love, some people will get challenged by my light, but I don't longer see that as something that is my, like I hold space with love and they can have their energy. And that is beautiful because in that they can rise and they can elevate. And instead of me responding to the trigger or, yeah. But for me, it's really about, okay, not only, because sometimes that's like, okay, well, when, when I would sit on a mountain, it's very easy to feel very peaceful. If I would sit there and nothing is happening and I have no obligations, that feels wonderful. But then we go back into life and we have our house and we have our, like everything we're doing and our and our beautiful missions. And and it's really taking this, this space of, okay, I, I being that everywhere, in every conversation, in every action, coming back to our truth and going within for guidance and support. And, and I think that's really the invitation for everyone in our own unique way to, to be the difference and to be more loving and, com and compassionate because everyone, like everyone is going through this huge elevation, whether conscious aware of it or not, like the frequencies on the earth are, are changing. If you look at like the Schumann resonance, it's showing the spikes and that does something with our system and, and, and it, it really invites us to look sometimes at our deepest traumas because they're ready to be healed. But in that, it's also honoring, like when you see people around, you don't know what is happening within them. So be compassionate, be loving, be open, because sometimes the stories that are happening behind the doors or that are happening in, in people's own space are sometimes very traumatic. So it's really inviting us to hold space with love and compassion and well, and that's the thing, right? If somebody's going through something heavy and we come in with our light, it, yes. it challenges the darkness because they're going through a hard time right now. So yes. they don't want to see light. They don't want to feel light. They don't want to feel, you know, so they're, it's that that hitting the wall, right? Um, mm -hmm. Or yeah. opening and closing a door, right? You're trying to open the door and they're like, no, I don't want it open right now. Yes. You know, yeah. and, and that's where the challenge comes in with the lights, the light and the dark is because... And, another person might be going through something that we might not understand or we might not know at the time. And we're, and if we come in and we just say, well, just cheer up and did it. Da, da, da. Well, yeah. maybe at that moment they can't cheer up. Maybe they're going through something so heavy that they can't share, you know? Uh, and it's okay because we need the balance and light. And, you know, I say this all the time on tea time is we need the yin and the yang. We yes. need the black and the white. We need, you know, the good and the bad. Yeah. Everyone has that in their story. You know, we all have some heavy layers and we all have some light layers and mm -hmm. we have some celebrations and some wins and all that. Um, yeah. I want to get into the cha uh, channeling because I haven't talked about this much on Tea Time is channeling. So yes. how old were you when you first started channeling? channeling ch well, channeling? Yes, when I, when I now <laughs> say that by times <laughs> channeling, we're bringing in these codes. No, I think like I, I think a lot of us because channeling, it's allowing your it, it come, comes in in many forms. So it's allowing your inner inspiration, this this guidance, this for me, it's a flow that comes through to just to just happen. So 
when I now look back as a child, I did that fluently, but somehow I started to judge or I started to think things about it. Or I said certain things where the people around me said, okay, this is not truth or this is not like, because they didn't understand the greater aspect of what, what was coming true. So it was really for me, like the last couple of years, also me committing to sitting with myself to channel the book, not per se knowing that it was going to be a book, but to take the time to just sit in meditation, in stillness with myself and to make this commitment to, okay, whatever is ready, I am this vessel, show me what is aligned and let it come through. So it's really about taking time to, to come back to you. And, and what, what I notice as well, when you are in moments of joy or even when you are in love or when you, like we channel, a lot of, like everyone can channel. It's like this inspiration that comes in, but then the power is to stop the mind. Because most of the time our mind starts to think like, okay, this is no logic or I don't have facts to, to, to share that this is truth or it starts to judge what is coming true. And then it stops. I, in the book as well, it gives a beautiful example, like our channeling capacity. So you can see it like um, a water tap that is open. But somehow as a child, most of us, and also for me, it, we dim it because we start to judge it or there are certain limitations that are happening around us. And then it's only this dripping, this dripping water. And the moment we choose to connect with that through meditation, through just being aware of our the sensations of our body, of our field, we slowly start to reconnect to that water tap and to the drips. And the more we listen to that, the more the tap opens again. And that was also for me, like it didn't start in immediately channeling the whole book. It was in me holding space for whatever wants to come through to do so. And it opened up more and more. And now it's 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 much easier. But sometimes it's like you really need to also hold space for your mind. <laughs> because a lot of things I know in the beginning, sometimes certain things came through and I thought, no, I'm not saying this. And then afterwards, there were beautiful <laughs> examples of, of that it was so aligned. But our mind just starts to interfere and says, okay, I'm not. <laughs> I know a certain moment in a one-on-one -on -one session, we were talking about a bunny. And I thought, no, I'm not going to say a bunny. But in the end, for that person, that bunny was so aligned and it was so perfect. But if I didn't, if, if I let my mind win, then it would have never come through and it would have never opened the beautiful things that opened up. So it's really like, can you truly surrender to the flow that is coming through? Because we are so so taught also to control, to control our mind, to control our thoughts. And, and that again is asking love to hold space. So can you truly feel safe, feel how love supports you? So I always invite the Flower of Love Council to hold space. And in that, it's almost like, okay, I feel I have support and I can open up and I can just like a beautiful flower open. And then the flow just comes. But it's really being in the space of non-judgment and in the space of openness and yeah, allowing that yeah, to come yeah. through. Well, it, it's making that space to grow, right? Yes. Because if you're in this tight box and you have no room to move, yes. you're not, you're going to push a, and it's going to be a struggle. Yeah. Instead of opening it up and, and saying, you know what, I'm just going to grow a little over here. I'm going to grow this way. I'm going to grow yes. that. You know, like a flower will grow in different ways. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, like my rose bush outside is growing uh, towards the building. And I'm like, no, go the yes. other way. Find the food yes. But yeah. the rose wants to grow this way, right? And it wants to come yes. towards the building. And for me, I, I look at that and I say, well, there's something that this rose is bringing to the building. It's, it's yes. coming to the building for a reason, uh, you know? And that's how we grow as well, is we, we grow in different ways. And sometimes people will be quick to judge what they don't mm -hmm. understand. And they'll say, yeah. well, why is she going that way? Like, why does she make it so complicated? Does she not see the other road? Well, maybe I do see another road that, nobody else sees yeah. you know and it's the way that that branch needs to go or or that seed needs to grow and water it sometimes not water it you know but society and and programming systems have really tightened us up into that box right mm -hmm. kim and and it doesn't give us room to grow no. because society says don't don't you dare grow don't you dare be different don't you dare yeah. go out of the box you yeah. know stay in the box and and we need yep. to really understand as ourselves, as that inner child, that inner seed that we need to grow and that we need to flow out of the box and we need to be different. We need to stay unique. You know, we go back to the Hello. onion. We got to yeah. be different. It is. And follow our divine timing, because that, that's also when I, what I know. If, if I now look back 10 years ago and you'd have, you would have asked, like, how would your life look like and what would if you have wanted? 
it's more beautiful than I thought before, but it's totally different than what my mind thinks it needed to be. And I think for a lot of us, sometimes our mind has a vision like, okay, I need to be there and that's what I need to manifest and that's what needs to happen and that will make me happy. But in the end, it's about the essential energy. So maybe some, like, for example, if you want to manifest a car, maybe the essential energy you want to experience is the freedom of just feeling safe that you know everything is working. It's not per se the car, it is the freedom or the safety in yourself. And it's coming back to the universe works in divine ways. So it's not per se this, this like I, I always love to share the example as well as, as people that are breaking world records. Yeah. People thought it was never possible, but somehow someone had a seed, had a vision, has a dream and kept on watering this energy. Like I know I can reach this, I know. And suddenly when you notice when a world record is broken, suddenly more people are being able to reach that record where before it was thought not possible. And we are co-creating this new earth, everyone in their own unique way. And we are being invited to create, to birth, to be in new ways. And that is beyond our comfort zone. That is beyond what we thought were possible. That is beyond what our mind thinks because our mind is programmed to keep everything the same because our mind knows we survived, even if the same is very uncomfortable, even if the same is challenging. And this time is really, and that's again, embodied ascension, taking your higher wisdom, your knowing into your body and really following this guidance of your heart that will lead you into more beautiful things than you were thought possible. Because every manifestation we think with our mind, we've already seen somewhere. But that's not our truth. That is not our path. That is not what our soul wants. Our soul wants new experiences. It wants something greater, something, but that is also, again, navigating from something different than our mind. It's going within our heart. And that is most of the time, the most difficult journey from the mind space to the heart and really allowing our heart to speak and our heart to lead and our heart to express. Because by that also emotions come like excitement and enthusiasm, love, but also sadness. And, and, and suddenly we need to feel everything that we weren't ready to feel, but there's so much wisdom in that. I think it, if we at school would have been taught like, okay, your emotions have a message, like they're sharing with you if something is out of alignment or if something is, is, is not in alignment, but we have been so numbed there, but is a part of our soul that is speaking to us, our body, our emotions. Also, when I got sick, like when I read the, the messages of what is happening in your body, like it's telling a story. And it's coming back to, okay, th like this is the only thing you have your whole life. Why neglect it? Why blame it? Why not listen to what it wants to share with you? Like we put so much energy and time in friends out there and, and that's beautiful. But why this, like, this is something that will stay with us forever. So that's embodiment as well. Listen, your emotions have power. Your, like even if you have illnesses or things that are happening, there is wisdom there. There's something your soul wants to share with you through these experiences and yeah well so it's, really it's the different journeys right kim like when you know we're, society has told us to be a certain way it's just like this success story right if you, if you don't do this you're not successful if you don't do that yeah. for me success is getting out of bed if somebody is dealing with mental illness and they, and they struggle and they get out of bed and they, and they they take that first five steps that's success yeah. You know, yes. we, we need to really start celebrating each other and yeah. one another, but not in a way that uh, the competition and the, and, and the comparing. And the, we all have our own stories. We're all unique. We're all different onions. We're all different flowers. We're all here yes. to make a difference. And so many people are dying with lost souls because they're scared of their light, because the light hasn't been taught. And you brought something really good up, Kim, emotions. We mm. do not teach emotions in school, and we should. Yeah. They, they, they have so many anger management classes out there, but understand why you're angry. Yeah. If you don't understand the emotion behind the anger, you're never going to get over that anger. No. It, it's going to be in that bottle, right? You're going to be that bottler. I'm a bottler. I hold and hold yes. and hold, and then I'm like, Phew. yeah. But yeah. I've been working on emotions over feelings. There's a difference, right? Yeah. I think emotions should be taught in schools. Uh, yeah. for all of the listeners out there, how do you guys feel about this? Like, do you feel that emotions need to be uh, taught in school as well? Because, you know, this is something that we need to start teaching, that we all mm -hmm. are unique in our own way. And we're yeah. all that flower of love. And love comes in different ways. It's not just uh, relationships. It's no. uh, helping somebody that's on the street, you know, um, saying hello, smiling to somebody. That's love. That's giving love. 
And yeah. we need to start really giving that love. You also mentioned something, Kim. You mentioned the word mani manifest. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about manifest because there's a lot of people out there that don't understand manifestation. So can you share a little bit about manifestation? Yeah. Well, in my in my my energy and what I've experienced, because I know a lot of people have different points of view of manifestations. But for me, it's about the essential energy. So the book as well. If you have a certain desire, a thing you want to manifest in your life, a thing you want you truly you truly want to experience, or but then it's inviting you to spiral deeper. Okay, if I manifest like maybe for a house, maybe you want a new house. If I manifest this house in my life, if I get to experience it, how do I feel? Why do I want this new house? What does it bring me? Does it bring me joy, excitement? Do I feel like a lot of gratitude? Does it like do I it, does it have more space? Or like for a lot of people, it represents different things. And, and it's again the onion spiraling deeper to okay, what is the essential energy of what you are trying to experience? And it's also understanding the cycles. Each time we set a desire out, like I want to manifest a new house then the whole world is going to conspire to bring that manifestation in alignment with your truth. But you are being invited to grow through that because that's also how manifestation works. If there is no resistance in your field, in your onion, if there are no layers of illusion and doubt, you would manifest it immediately. Like I always love like uh, how Abraham and Esther Hicks, they talk about buttons. So if we talk about buttons, a lot of people don't have resistance about buttons. So then suddenly you find a button on the street because there's no resistance in our field. But it's the same like with the house. Maybe you want a very pricey house for your mind. The universe, your life will show you certain experiences that need to be healed, that need to be seen, that need to be loved for you to come into vibrational resonance with that. So it's honoring the cycle of growth. It's also for me when I when I channeled this book, I thought, okay, this is amazing. But afterwards I was going through a huge healing cycle where a lot of weeds needed to go out of my inner garden for me to be able to share these teachings with the world. And, and when you start to understand that, it's empowering because each time I am being invited to stretch out of my comfort zone, I also know I'm being challenged in a way. I Maybe something happens or, but it's again, my field asking me to clear or to witness these parts of me that are out of alignment with that. And it's really, yeah, I, for me, it really empowers because you know, like when challenges come up, it's not to hold me back, but it's to empower me to step into my next level. And that's again, love helping me to look at with compassion with what is happening and with what is, yeah. So manifestation for me, it's coming in vibrational resonance with the essence of what you want. And like, um, I know someone at one point said, okay, I, I really want a life partner. But in the end, they want something that want something someone that loved them unconditionally. And, and in her vision, it was a man, but she was not clear. And in the end, it was a dog that came into her life that brought her so much love. Like it was there every time she came home and it didn't want anything of her. And it was just unconditional love. Yeah. And it's understanding like it's honoring our divine path. It's honoring our divine truth. And I think also, as you shared, I, I found a really beautiful, like the vision of success, like the old paradigm way of success is crumbling down because it's not in alignment. We're now being invited. I always love to share divine success and divine success is feeling healthy, happy, having time to do what you love. It's not about working 80 hours a week and having a lot of money on your bank. No, it's like doing the things you love. That is true success, like having beautiful souls around you. and and but most of it being healthy and happy and having energy and it's really coming back to this deeper understanding of the gift and blessing that is in each and every moment and i think everyone tuning in in your own unique way we all have had our challenges and we all have had our struggles but they make you aware of the blessings of a beautiful sun of the blessings of this now moment sharing this beautiful conversation with you and it's understanding that that is the true abundance and that is the true gift and when we see that suddenly we notice even more abundance because as a butterfly flies by or we find a button on the street or but it's coming back to this joyful like even in challenging moments understanding there's always something to be grateful for the light that comes true or maybe a beautiful rainbow or yeah and if you do that you make your life so much more fun and joyful and beautiful things open up because we stop resisting we stop controlling we step into flow and into yeah the stream of life and our divine guidance again channeling our energy comes through and supports us instead of we saying no it needs to look like this and i keep on holding on and i'm not ready and it needs to but in that maybe what you want is much more magical or what is aligned for you but we keep holding on to this second best or maybe third best because that's what our mind wants but yeah so 
surrender with love to your truth and your light and your unique seed and your 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 unique flower and whatever yeah so. i love how i love how this tea time is just flowing because i have questions here i ha I, I ask all my guests all the time and i asked you what your favorite color was and you said rainbow and you yeah. had just mentioned the rainbow and i'm oh, just yeah. like like it just <laughs> flows man like i'm just gonna sit and enjoy this tea because this tea is just yes. magically flowing beautifully uh but before we get into the rainbow color you mentioned buttons and when you say buttons as a little girl i collected buttons and, oh, really and, wow. and that and for me i found that it was the holes that were amazing they they yeah. they brought adventure you could jump into one hole with a thread go into the next hole go yes. into and then yes. that's how life is it right you jump into the hole like a rabbit hole alice in wonderland again miss liz yes. and 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 then you have this magical adventure right yeah. where you got to look within the button you got to look within yourself yeah. uh you know and then the color comes out and then the rainbow is there to yes. enjoy. So let's find out about this rainbow. Why is that your favorite color or rainbow? For me, it's really about embracing everything. Like we need the sun and the rain to see all the colors of life. We need sometimes the shadows and the light to fully experience we are alive. We need the sadness, like the anger, because the anger, there's also power in our anger. And we need the excitement. and. For me, the rainbow represents the wholeness of us, the uniqueness of who we are. And, and I love as you share the buttons, because for a lot of us, we've lost wonder. As a child, we find everything magical. But somehow as an adult, we take everything for granted. But how for granted is it that our body just heals itself when it's possible, that we can just experience the beautiful sunrise and all of it. We can enjoy a cup of like a butterfly, how it flies. Why did we lose the wonder? Because when we can see the wonder, like it's making magic a normal thing. It's making wonder a normal thing because sometimes we hear these healing stories and we can say, yeah, that's just a wonder. That's just one soul happening. But if we allow ourselves to tap into the greater version of ourselves and we allow ourselves to tap into love, we can bring wonder back as a normal instead of seeing it. But it's looking through a different lens. And that's what really love has empowered me to do, like not take everything for granted and really go and look for the gems and look for the beautiful things and look for like because the universe as well, it's giving us signals every time. But are we ready to see it? Like if you see double, double numbers on your phone or you see like a message on the internet and it resonates so with you, we can, or we can let our mind lead and say, okay, this is just a random thing. Or we can just let our soul lead that is excited and it says, yes, there is another guidance on my path, another breadcrumb that is leading me forward. And it's follow, like, it's again, coming back to this childlike wonder. And that's what I love about rainbows. It brings the child in me, like everywhere I see rainbows, it just brings a smile and it's something magical. Like, also, it's not something well, it's like the lucky know. charms, right? The pot of gold. It <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, in so many ways. But I think also we are being invited to to alchemize our shadows into gold within ourselves and, and to really embrace everything that we are. So for me, it represents so many things. And it's also I, I love all the colors because it's the full spectrum of everything that is life, that is our being, that is what we're able to see with our senses. But there are so many more colors happening beyond what our eyes can see. And yeah, but there's just uh, something magical. For me, it opens magic. So that's really, um, yeah. Oh, I, I, I can see you channeling their, your inner child right now and just lucky, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, on St. Patrick's Day, I always go and buy myself a box of Lucky Charms. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yes. And I'm just, and I think of rainbows when I do that. And I think yeah. of, you know, as a child, we were told uh, at the end of the rainbow, there's a pot of gold, right? There's a yeah. the little leprechaun. Uh, yes. You know, I, and it brought the magic. It brought the imagination. Can yes. you ever catch that little leprechaun? Can you ever get yes. that pot of gold? You know, yeah. and then you start chasing the rainbow and then the rainbow starts to go away. Yes. So you wait for the next one to come and then the next one comes and you're doing the same thing, right? You're getting yeah. excited. You're, you're having that, that joyfulness in there. Uh, and letting yourself dream because that's a powerful thing as well. Like when you dream, daydream, when you fantasize about what you want, you're planting seeds of your desires in your future because it's also understanding we can only have one thought so we can choose fear or we can choose dreaming or love and 
And if you choose dreaming or love long enough, that is what you're going to manifest into your future. And it's really understanding like we have this choice and sometimes we get challenged, beautiful. But then it's having the resilience to bounce back quickly. It's not about not ever being like I'm being challenged all of the time, but it's the, the resilience to bounce back, like not taking that challenge with me for the whole week, no choosing to shift it in just a couple of seconds. And that's the empowerment about taking our embodied wisdom into our into every vessel and embodying it in every moment. And that really empowers us so that we can see like, okay, when that happens, okay, I have the power, like going back on this chase of this beautiful butterfly, like this beautiful rainbow, like, yeah. yeah. So give yourself permission to dream. That, that's the thing as well. As a child, a lot of us like at school, don't they dream? Why not? That's how we break world records. There was someone having a dream about that world record and they visioned it. They saw themselves reaching that. Like if you look also at athletes, they constantly think about their goal. They constantly see themselves already experiencing that into their lives. And that's how they manifest that. Of course, with hard work and dedication and focus. But a powerful part as well is like they know the power of their mind. Do I stay in fear and lack and limitation or do I choose expansion? Do I choose to believe in the infinite possibilities? And they are there. And when you do that, it opens up your field. And suddenly, indeed, the wonder comes up and you get to play again and you get to be excited again and dream outside of the box because we're not meant to stay in this box. So start with the awareness, start with the thought, start with dreaming. And then you bring it into your physical uh, reality by bringing that in, like also in conversations. We have so been taught to talk about everything that is wrong instead of talking yeah. about our dreams, instead of talking about what is going right, instead of celebrating like, yes, I've been able to come out of bed and I've been able to see the sunlight, celebrate that. Because by celebrating that, you're bringing that energy into your field, into your energy, into your inner garden, and that will be your future. And yeah, there are so many powerful things to share there. <laughs> <laughs> and I can feel the passion. And now yes. what's the word you gave me? Passionate and driven. Yes. And, and, and that's what I'm saying. This tea is just flowing. Like the universe yeah. is doing its thing. I'm not yeah. even going to argue the universe. I'm going to just let it flow and let it come. Yes. So your words that you gave me was passionate and driven for to describe yourself, Kim. Yeah. And I can see the passion and I can see the driven. And you're bringing so many good things to the table today for the listeners and for myself as well. Uh, you know, we're talking about the layers of onions. We're talking about buttons. We're talking yes. about rainbows, things that we should be celebrating, the simple things, the little things. Bring back the imagination. You're going to bring back a lot of good storytelling as well. You're going to yes. be getting people engaged in reading again. Uh, yeah. You know, um, I really am enjoying this tea time so much and we're almost at the end here. So I want to get, I want to get some shout outs for, for your book and your website and all that. So if you could uh, spell out the, your website for the audio listeners and your book and all that, where they can yes. find all that good stuff. You can find my book on flower of love that love. There's also our beautiful blogs on flowerofloft.com, but the most of the things of my book are on flowerofloft.love. You can also find Activating the Flower of Love on all the major online and offline bookstores and Amazon and all that. So if you like, and sometimes it's easier to type in my name somehow, Kim van der Zande. It's a Dutch name, but <laughs> then you find it more easy. Or Soul Love, because when you find Soul Love on Amazon, it also links to this book. So, and my card deck you can only find on my website, flowerofloft.love. And there's also a fun pick a card option like a digi digital one i love that as well each morning i just go to my website and i just do pick a card and it shows all of the card decks and whatever card is aligned for you in that moment so yeah i would say check it out well look at that you even get a pick a card you get yes. to, you get to play and i love yes. when we get to play right we don't play enough as adults yes. we, we're so serious we got to really just loosen up Yes. Uh, you know, and and thank you for bringing the button in because the button is something that I, I really enjoy doing as a little child was finding different buttons because they had different unique yeah. looks and feels and textures. And so let's collect buttons. If you're collecting buttons, Miss Liz would like to know, and Kim would yes. like to know. Um, I want to really share what, what, what kind of buttons you find the next couple of hours, days. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's all let's all start yes. collecting buttons and, and do a button collection on tea time. Uh, yes. You know, we just never know where Miss Liz will go next with the buttons. Uh, no. But Kim, I really want to thank you for joining me today. And I want to thank Paul again for uh, connecting us together. Uh, let's stay connected and let's keep playing and let's keep having some fun. 
Uh, let, let's see who catches that rainbow because I, I I'm out for a good catch if you are. Yeah. Thank um, you. And uh, I want to thank all the listeners and viewers that have tuned in today. Uh, thank you again on Instagram for all of you viewers that are tuning in. I really appreciate you guys as well. If you guys would like to know more about Miss Liz's Tea Times, check out Miss Liz's website, www.misslizsteatime.com. Uh, and check out Miss Liz's YouTube channel. Get on over there. Subscribe. And we're going to be starting a whole new month in July. So the press release should be out by tonight. I'm hoping fingers and toes cross, cross your toes, cross your fingers, and then you'll get to see the cue. And we're going to play a little bit in July. We're going to have some fun. So uh, Kim, thank you again. Uh, Flower of Love, check her out. Check out what she does. Check her book out. Check and, and go pick yourself a card. You just never know. You might get a message that you've been longing to hear. Uh, and again, thank you everybody for tuning in. And we'll be back. Same time, same place, and we'll do this all over again and serve you a new TEA Miss Liz style.